Right, so I'd like to talk about the diels alder reaction today. And I'm going to start by going through the basic reaction, uh, give you an overview of uh, what it looks like. So we take a uh, diene and a dienophile. A dienophile is simply something that loves dienes. So these are just two things that react together. And we form a new six-membered ring. Now, I've numbered the atoms here so that you can see uh, what's going on. And so uh, this is what used to be the diene, and this is what used to be the dienophile um, coming together. So the two new bonds you've made are here and here. And notice as well that we've lost the pi bond in the dienophile is gone. That was used to make these new sigma bonds here. And these two pi bonds uh, that were in the original diene uh, fold back and form a single pi bond between carbons two and three. So we get a six-membered ring product. And because it involves a cyclic intermediate, the bonds form all at the same time. Now let me show the uh, arrows for this. You can see we actually have a cyclic set of arrows. We're used to seeing arrows go in a series, uh, but in this case, they, they uh, go in a cycle. We took our three pi bonds in the original um, starting materials, and we ended up with just one. And those electrons from the, the extra two pi bonds ended up in these two two new uh, sigma bonds. Now, as you should recall, uh, sigma bonds are usually stronger than pi bonds, and certainly carbon-carbon sigma bonds are stronger than carbon-carbon pi bonds. So that provides the driving force for the reaction thermodynamically. At the same time, you are going to a um, lower level of entropy. So this is a much more ordered uh, product than the two starting materials. The reaction goes via a, a cyclic intermediate involving six electrons, and that is, in fact, aromatic. So we're used to thinking of benzene, where we have six atoms that are all sigma bonded together, and then we have six pi electrons um, delocalized around that framework. In this case, it's the transition state that is uh, closer to an aromatic system. I don't know enough of the theory to know uh, if it's strictly aromatic, but certainly it's got a lot of parallels. It's like benzene with two of the sigma bonds missing. And this leads to this kind of product. Now, we can also um, have all sorts of groups attached to our diene, plus we can have groups attached to the dienophile. And we can even have a third bond. We can have an alkyne here. And if we have an alkyne, that gives us an extra pi bond in the starting materials. That ends up as a leftover pi bond uh, between carbons five and six. And I'll show examples of those in a moment. Now, the, this uh, diels alder reaction is just one of uh, uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of such pericyclic reactions. In fact, I did my PhD on a similar kind of uh, reaction. Uh, this is just one of many, but it's the only one that we'll cover in organic two. 
Now let me take a look in more detail at what we need um, from the, the two pieces, the diene and the dienophile. A normal kind of Diels-Alder reaction involves a fairly electron-rich diene. Um, so if you add substituents to that diene, such as alkyl groups or alkoxy groups, these are ethers, uh, then it tends to work better. However, that's not a, really a requirement. A simple diene like the uh, buta-1,3-diene, which I showed before, are usually just fine. However, the double bonds need to be S cis. Now, we've learned about cis and trans before. Um, cis uh, groups are on the same side. Now, in this case, the S refers to the single bond between the dienes. So, uh, sorry, between the um, two double bonds. This is an S trans configuration. Notice the double bonds uh, are not cis or trans, they, they're only mono substituted. So what we're looking at here is how this single bond has the uh, double bonds oriented around it. So in this case, the two double bonds are on opposite sides, so that's called S trans. Here they're on the same side, and so they're called S cis. And to react, they have to be S cis. Now, in most cases, like um, butadiene, like this one, it's going to be an equilibrium, which will actually favor the S trans slightly, but you're going to form some of the S cis at equilibrium. It's, it's not quite free rotation about this bond as we just learned recently about the overlap between the pi orbitals in these alkenes, it means there's slightly restricted rotation about this single bond. But nevertheless, at room temperature, you would get an equilibrium going like this. Um, but if you have a diene where it's fixed and locked in an S cis conformation, uh, an S cis form, it will work very well. If it's locked in an S trans uh, form, it won't react at all. Let's look at some sample dienes here. And the cyclopentadiene ring compound is locked in the S cis uh, form, so that reacts very quickly. The uh, butadiene reacts moderately well. You have to heat it. Uh, maybe takes a little bit of time, but it'll react pretty well. Uh, this one, where we have an interaction between the methyl groups, this is going to be uh, much slower and may not even happen unless you have a very reactive dienophile. And then last of all, this uh, cyclic one where the double bonds are locked in an S trans configuration. They can't change unless the whole molecule breaks apart uh, or I summarizes. Uh, this one will not react in the diels alder reaction at all. So for a good dienophile, <coughs> we usually want to have some kind of electron withdrawn group attached to the C double bond C. And the most common example of this would be <coughs> a, uh, a carbonyl group, which could be in the form of an aldehyde, a ketone, an ester, an amide, a carboxylic acid. Uh, but also, you quite often see nitriles, and sometimes you'll see um, nitro compounds, sulfones, sulfoxides, and other compounds like that. So let me show you a simple example with a simple diene and a simple dienophile containing a carbonyl. 
The six-membered ring is formed with the four from there and the two from here. It's often called a four plus two cycloaddition reaction. And we get one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so you can see again we're forming this bond between one and six and this bond between four and five. So that's uh, a very typical uh, Diels-Alder. But as I mentioned earlier, you can also do this kind of chemistry with alkynes. So let me show you one with alkynes. And for this one, I'm going to use a cyclic uh, diene. So this is not benzene. It's uh, cyclohexa-1,3-diene. This is a good dienophile because it's locked uh, in the S-cis conformation. And we're going to react it with this alkyne. This alkyne actually has two electron uh, withdrawing groups. Uh, so this is actually sometimes uh, called MAD, uh, methyl acetylene dicarboxylate, uh, because it's a really MAD reactive uh, dienophile. Now this one's a little harder to see because these two ester groups are not uh, directly for, uh, forming part of the ring, and neither are these two carbons from the cyclic diene. So you have to get used to seeing uh, where the new six-membered ring is going to form. So you have to have the two pi bonds in the diene and the pi bond in the dienophile, and they're going to form a new ring between one and six and four and five. These two don't participate these two are outside the main ring. These two carbons here that are not part of the main ring form like a bridge across the top of the ring. And we can actually redraw that if, if we want in three dimensions. You can have a go at this if you like. There is our six-membered ring again. So those are two typical examples of the Diels-Alder reaction. And uh, notice you can always draw the arrows uh, in the same way. It's always a cyclic uh, transition state the, um, and a cyclic set of arrows. By the way, the arrows can go either clockwise or counterclockwise. And because they're going in a cycle, they give the same product each time. OK, so now I'd like to give you a couple of examples to try uh, yourself. Uh, I'll, I'm going to put them up on the screen, give you a few seconds to try them, and then, uh, let you, uh, then I'll show you the answers and, and let you see if you got them right. All right, so here we have um, a simple open diene. And there are the four atoms we need to consider. And it's going to react with this dienophile. And that's going to be uh, our atoms five and six. Now, I'm assuming that these are going to be in a one-to-one -one ratio uh, because we ha actually have a second double bond here that could possibly react further. Uh, but let's just keep it simple and have a one-to-one -one ratio. This one here is going to form a bond to here, this bond to here, and we'll get this product. I'm actually keeping things simple in this uh, description of the Diels-Alder reaction. There is another rule uh, called the endo rule, which I didn't get into, um, which is described in the book and tells you 
uh, whether you get an endo or an exo isomer. I'm not going to include that in the exam, uh, but it does mean that sometimes you can get uh, perhaps two different products forming. Rather than uh, going through that, I'm, I'm going to just um, try and give you simple examples. On the exam, I'll give you simple examples where it, it doesn't really matter, or if you draw the wrong isomer, I won't penalize you. Uh, this final example, um, you could have that issue. I just want you to work out what would be the basic product you would get from that via a Diels-Alder reaction. So again, we should label our atoms. And hopefully, you're getting used to this now. We can draw the bond that we're going to form. And we're going to get going to get a new six-membered ring here, again forming a bond between one and six and four and five. And I never numbered the atoms in this one, but it was exactly the same way. Uh, since this is a ring reactant, we can again draw the product uh, in three dimensions, like this. And in fact, it's the endo rule that tells us this will be pointing down rather than sticking out like this. Uh, but that would be uh, how the product, this product would look in three dimensions. So ho fo hopefully this has given you uh, a good example of the main um, points of the diels alder reaction. I'd like to just summarize the key points again. Okay, so to close, I'd like to say but um, the reaction, the Diels-Alder reaction involves a, <coughs> a diene, which must be S-cis reacting with a dienophile, which nearly always has an electron withdrawing group attached to it. Uh, the four uh, from the diene react with the two um, carbons of the double bond of the dienophile to give you a new six-membered ring. And you've formed a new bond between one and six, a new bond between four and five. Uh, this dienophile could be a tri um, an alkyne, in which case you get an extra double bond over here. But uh, if you don't have that, you end up with a simple cyclohexene product. And I think that's about it.